everybody. Today I'm talking about the eight mistakes that sellers sometimes make when they're selling their house. And these eight mistakes, any one of them could cost you money. Sometimes they could cost you a lot of money. So if you own a house, even if you're not thinking of selling right now, but you might sometime in your lifetime, you're going to want to watch the video so you know the eight things not to do when you're selling your home. <laughs> living in Northern Arizona where I teach you everything there is to know about living in the northern half of the state of Arizona. I post videos every single week on this type of topic. I hope you enjoy the video. My name is Dawn Dickinson. I am a realtor in Northern Arizona so if you ever have a real estate question go to the section below in the description and you can find my contact information and I would love to hear from you. Okay the first mistake I sometimes see here in Arizona is when people turn off the power while their house is for sale or right before the house is ready to close. So the first reason not to turn off the power is in Northern Arizona it gets very cold at night and there's a possibility that your pipes could freeze. Even if you have the water turned off in the cold winter days where it gets below freezing there could be some water in the line and pipes could freeze and then when you come to do the home inspection they turn on the water and you know you have a leaking pipe that you have to fix. The other thing is you need to have the electricity on for the home inspector anyhow so you might as well leave it on through the entire escrow process but especially when you have it listed for sale and then the reason of course that you need it on when you're listing for sale is that you have to have the air conditioning or the uh, heating running so that when your buyer comes in your potential buyer comes in they're not too hot or too cold or if they come in late in the evening and all the lights are not able to turn on it makes it difficult to show this will kind of have a little souring of your buyer and they're not going to come back and they're going to worry there's something wrong with the house and if you go in there and it's really hot or really cold it's like oh let me get out of here and they're not going to look around long enough to decide they want to purchase your beautiful home. The second mistake I see homeowners sometimes make is canceling the homeowner's insurance policy too soon. Now typically a seller won't cancel the policy until you're in escrow and what could happen and what has happened before is a homeowner will call the insurance company and say hey I'm closing on the 15th cancel the policy as of the 15th and then when it gets close to the closing date something will happen that will delay your closing. It happens all the time closings get delayed usually only by a few days but say on the 15th you realize oh I'm not going to close today we're not going to close until the eighth day and then you call the insurance company and say hey I want to extend my policy till the 18th and they're like oh that's too late you've already canceled it and now it's a big hassle to reinstate the policy most of the time or I should say some of the time they won't reinstate the policy and they'll make you have a brand new policy which is going to cost you a lot of money only to be in place for a week and that's a big hassle that you don't want to have to deal with but the danger of you saying oh well that's it it's only three days I'm not going to do anything what if your house burns down in that three days I mean in northern Arizona we have you know forest here we're at risk of forest fire or any other damages that would happen to your home in those three days you're going to be responsible because it's now not insured and the buyer has not taken possession of it so if your house falls down or burns down, falls down, burns down, whatever. <laughs> you're going to be liable for that. Your buyer's going to cancel the sale and you're out the money. So just don't cancel the policy. What you should do is call the insurance company and say, hey, I'm under escrow. I am going to sell the house. We're scheduled to close on the 15th, but don't cancel the policy until I give you the go ahead. That's going to be the safest way and that can avoid a loss of a lot of money. Sometimes I see homeowners make is they neglect the landscape. And this is typically, of course, when the house has become vacant you might not have your landscaper or a landscaper come in and you can get weeds growing up especially here in northern Arizona in the spring you'll have a granite lawn you think oh there's no landscaping but suddenly like a billion weeds will be in the yard or if you have a lawn and it doesn't get mowed now you have no curb appeal because somebody's pulled up to the house and like Ew, it looks you know abandoned or neglected and they might not even go inside the other thing is when you have newspapers pile up on the front now this is unfortunate because sometimes you've got these local papers that you can't get them to stop delivery so you may have to have one of your neighbors uh, check in and make sure those uh, newspapers are thrown in the garbage or at least set out of you because you don't want the house to look neglected or abandoned and uh, discourage your buyer from uh, deciding they like the home. That sellers sometimes make is they use a realtor who's not from the area, a realtor who is out of the area. Uh, how this can cause you a problem is 
the agent who comes from Phoenix A and you're selling in Sedona, the Phoenix agent doesn't subscribe to the Sedona Verde Valley MLS, just for an example, say, and now they list it in the Phoenix MLS or they're like, oh, I can do it. And they subscribe to a local MLS and they do the wrong one. Oops, they've got it in the Prescott MLS and not the Sedona MLS because they just don't know the area that much. So that makes the house not visible to the abundance of buyers because what happens is the local agents that work that area they are sending out all sorts of MLS feeds to buyers who are interested in homes just like yours but that house your house won't show up in the feed if it's listed in an MLS that the local agents don't subscribe to so it's gonna make it less visible now sure you could have a buyer that's looking in Zillow and they see it and they're like what about this one and now what happens is your local agent doesn't have the information that they need to make a good decision on if it's right for their client and it's harder to get in sometimes they have a lockbox it's not easily accessible and it just makes it more difficult for the local agents to do the sale and the local agents are the ones that have the buyer so just go with the local listing agent who works your community best if they live in the community in the area you know within the next town say because they've got access to the buyers who are going to want your house and if you go outside you could end up taking longer to sell your home or you could get less money for it the most common mistake I see homeowners make when they try to sell their home and that's overpricing the home. So especially if you're in a buyer's market, there are a lot of other homes that meet buyer's criteria that they can choose from. So if you're overpriced, they may decide they don't want to look at it or they may decide, oh, I like it, but I'm going to offer on this other one because it's priced better. So what I would do is just take the advice of your listing agent and list your home for sale at the price that they recommend based on comparable sales of homes that are similar to yours in your or local market. Mistake number eight is don't turn down a good offer because you want to hold out for a higher price. There are times that a lower offer could be a better offer and it's important that you talk with your listing agent that you've hired to decide if it's a good offer because you could have a cash offer, you could have an offer with an extremely high down payment which makes it a very solid deal. You could have an offer that has a short closing time or an offer that has a local lender and not a national national lender so a lot of us Asians are up here don't like it when you use some national lender um, they prefer local lenders because local lenders are better to work with and they have a better time getting the appraisers out and that kind of thing so there are other things that could make your offer more attractive and don't just turn it down because oh I think I'm gonna get ten thousand dollars more because that might not be worth it another thing is oh if it's a little too low but it's a good offer you could just send a counter offer at least giving the potential buyer a chance to say oh is it worth another ten twenty twenty five thousand dollars do I want the house and then you could make a deal but just don't flat out refuse an offer because you think you can get more especially if it's only a little bit more often in real estate your first offer is your best offer not all the time but that's a kind of a uh, a rumor we have so don't turn on a perfectly good offer just to hold out for top dollar especially in a cooling uh, or a more of a buyer's market that's it that's the eight mistakes I see homeowners sometimes make when they're trying to sell their home I hope you enjoyed the video my name's Dawn Dick the channel living in northern Arizona. I sell real estate up here in Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, Prescott. So if you have a real estate question, I always have my contact information in the description below. You can give me a call, text, email, and I will get back to you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing and I hope to see you back here on my channel next week.